Greetings. My name is Brother Herman of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. We are a nonprofit organization commissioned by our Holy Trinity, funded by our communities most fortunate to help our communities less fortunate. The communities less fortunate is described in detail as those who are lacking information or correct knowledge, correct information in certain areas of uh, character building, character makeup, and moral ethic uh, codes to our society that we're called to be uh, governing ourselves to live in. So what we're doing is we're being used by our Holy Trinity to bring forth his truths, God's word, the truths, breaking them down into layman's terms so that everyone can understand a little bit more higher understanding, a little bit more correct information which will bring more accurate knowledge for us to operate in. We are attacking three areas, or should I say, uh, being, being used to minister to three different areas. And those three areas we have uh, found to be the most crucial uh, pertaining to these uh, values, principles, and moral ethics uh, that, we are, that we are all in need of having. We know that we are lacking in, as a whole in our communities. And so we're reaching out to those who are in need of such correct information. MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org is solely funded by the community's most fortunate. So if you'd like to assist us in this, go to our website at MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org, the front page. You can click on to assist us right on the home page, and it will take you to a donation site. That'll be youcaring.com forward slash our children's children hyphen 761449. Also, we have a gofundme.com forward slash make them see the truth hyphen org account that you can use as well. We thank you for all of your assistances and your donations that you are called and being moved to assist us with. We also appreciate you making contact, and you can find that contact page on the third page of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. If you click on the link, it'll take you to an application assessment form for you to fill out in its entirety and press submit. When you do that, it'll send that, send that form directly to us. And depending on the area of need in which you are uh, in re referencing to and in need of, that'll be the 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 uh, certified member of our Make Him See the Truth community who will make contact with you and assist you in that area. We're attacking the spiritual, the legal or judicial and the me medical areas because we know that these are the vital areas, the three most vital areas that uh, lack thereof can cause a poverty to take place in the perceptions, thinking, and speech patterns of our individuals who make up our diverse nations inside of our communities. So we want to be used to restore those values by bringing the truth, the correct information, and the correct knowledge, uh, presenting it in video form as well as email, as well as uh, any other social media such as YouTube or freedom.tm or any other social site, uh, Google+, Plus, it could be Facebook, but we're going to be utilizing these forums to bring forth God's message so that we can restore this value back into our people. There is three series currently, two that are finished. One Series one was uh, indicative or relating to the birthright, which is the information and knowledge of where we come from spiritually so that we can uh, be used to uh, enlighten and to make aware of those who are still walking around in the ignorant state or the un incomplete state. Uh, th this is a process, this thing called life, and we know that with life there are many different processes that will come with it, and these can be looked upon as trials, challenges, and uh, situations and circumstances. And it is not meant for harm, it is meant for growth. And we know this to be so, so we teach it in this way, in this light. Excuse me, by teaching it in this light, it'll allow you, the, the, the hearer and the viewer, to weigh it out and see for yourself if it does not ring true. 
And if it does not ring true, then by all means, make contact. But we know that anything that make them see the truth is going to promote or uh, or stand on is going to be from the word of God. So we know God's word is truth. And so we have no uh, qualms about uh different opinions and different perceptions we welcome them all but we know what we're, we're speaking is on god's truth it's centered around god's truths so the saving grace is the birthright the birthright must be passed down if it is not passed down how can one be uh held accountable for uh having the kind of character uh that uh that uh we are all judged and based uh, uh, our reputations are on the kind of character of Christ that can be found in Galatians 5, 22 to 25. How can one be expected to have those fruits of the spirit if there's, if it has never been taught to them or brought to their awareness? So make them see the truth.org. We're going to bring it to your awareness. We're going to be used by our Holy Trinity to play the whole tape and nothing but the tape for your awareness. Those who are lacking this information, uh, Series two was basically describing the fruits of the spirit, which is Jesus's character when he was here on earth, as well as abroad, uh, 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 being called home and abroad. And so what we're doing a call to be is in that like character. We are uh, allowing the Holy Spirit and our Lord Jesus to orchestrate some different uh avenues that we are to take, some different paths that we are to take that we're not normally used to taking. And this will bring us out of our comfort zone because we've been trained up in air, most of us. And so what we're doing here at Make Them See the Truth is allowing these paths to become more clearer so that you can see the path that you need to be on as a non-believer. If you are a believer, then it is not meant for you except for iron sharpens iron so you can get gain something from it as well, but we are solely uh, focused on the unrepentant and the non-believer. Why? Because that is who Jesus came for. The ministry of reconciliation came for the sick, not the whole or the healthy. So the doctor only is in business be for the sick. If everyone was healthy, then the we wouldn't need any doctors, would we? So therefore, that is what we are called to do. We're called to be used as vessels and tools to bring forth that medication or that medicine, that ministry, uh, a ministerial uh, substance that is going to allow you to come out of the afflicted state into the healed state so that you can go from a walking curse to a walking blessing like we have. We're so fortunate because we're grateful because of being allowed to have it freely, but you can only get that when we ask for it. We can only receive it after we ask for it. You must ask first because Jesus said it himself you have not because you ask not so we have to come to an end of ourselves and we have to cry out and we'll be speaking on that today further but uh, that was a uh, series two it was in relation to the character of Christ and how to develop it <clears throat> series three is frequently asked questions there's five parts to each series we have part A already done, part B is uh, done as well, part C was done, I believe, yesterday, and today we're going to be focusing on part D. Part D is uh, going to be, we're going to be talking on why is it that no matter how clear the truth is, some will not receive it. They'll continue to reject it. They will, it, it could slap them in their face and they still wouldn't see it. Uh, and we're going to be speaking on why people reject the truth. Okay, that is what the day, today's top, topic, subject matter is on. And uh, we're going to start off with uh, when Jesus said, my own people reject me. Jesus said, my own people rejected me that a prophet has no honor in his own home, in his own hometown. He has, he has more honor when he leaves his home or his hometown and goes abroad to strangers or a, stranger, a, a more foreign town. He'll receive more honor there than he will at his own home around his own people. Well, I wonder why that is. Hmm. I always 
premise rejection around fear because I know that fear plays a major part in why people reject the truth. Most people reject the truth because it takes them out of what they already think they know. It presents something that is foreign to them and most people that if, if they don't understand it or they don't know it already, they're not comfortable with it. So they really need to be softened a little bit in order to receive that which is different from what they've been taught. And so that is the main reason I believe most people reject the truth. The second main reason is because of the things that come along with receiving the truth like responsibility we can now hold you accountable once you have the truth once you have the knowledge you can be made held accountable and it's easy to say you can't hold me accountable because i didn't know and that is why jesus is going to make sure that everyone on this face of the of the planet of the, on this earth is going to receive the truth from the end this end of the earth to that end of the earth he said so himself and so now when you take your last breath, you'll have no, no excuse, no more excuses as to why you rejected the truth. He said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. And he meant that. So he, Jesus said, I am the truth, the way and the life. No one can come to the father except through me. Why is it then, if that is true, then why is it that we reject Jesus? Why is it that we reject Yeshua? Why is it that we reject the Son of God? Why do we reject the Savior that came to save us and keep us from going down into something that was not even created for us? Why is it that some people will reject the truth all the way to their dire end, all the way to their rock bottom? Why is it? Is it because of the responsibility that comes along with it? What is the responsibility we're talking about? There is a lot of responsibility that comes along with truth. Number one, you are no longer to just play all the time. You have to grow from a child into an adult. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They simply want to play all day and not be held accountable. They're irresponsible. They can't be depended on. They're double-minded. They're unstable in everything that they think, say, and do. They can't be depended upon, so they're, they're not going to receive an adult's reward. The only kind of reward they're going to ever receive is the kind of reward that their actions and behavior commands, and that is the reward of a child. So most people reject the truth because of the responsibility of be having to become uh, a matured adult commands. Why is that? Because once you become a matured adult, now you have to take on responsibilities such as providing for a family, providing for yourself without illegal activity. That means getting a legal job or a legal career, having to go to school for that career. That means we have to get up early in the morning. That means we can't hang out late at night. That means our schedules need to be changed. And a lot of people just simply don't want to change their schedules. Even though in the, at the end of the day, it's going to benefit them greater and everyone around them than it would had they stayed the same or remained the same. They can't see into the future or uh, into tomorrow. They can't see into tomorrow because they're only too busy living for today. That is the way of a child or an immature, incomplete adult. And so now we can understand one another reason why people refuse the truth. Because the truth commands responsibility. It commands that you keep a job, hold a job, be on time for that job. It also commands that you take that responsibility of the paycheck and budget it properly. Uh, we, we call that delegation of the funds properly. Okay, that means you have to budget, you have to hold yourself accountable, you have to take care of your of your 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 assets, your liabilities, your expenses and your miscellaneous accounts. You must take care of these accounts in order to not go under. And your job being on time every day will help you do that. That is responsible action. Action that is thought out and 
uh, operated out or uh, operated in. It's it's a action that a child can simply not do. Only a made up mind can get up every day on time and be to work on time every day for his boss or if you're the boss for your business. And so that is a lot of responsibility. It calls for you to even grow even further into self-employment if that's what your endeavor is. But how can you be a boss of others if you can't even show up for work on time as a worker, as a regular employee? How would you ever be able to oversee other employees? You can't. So you must become responsible. And the only way to become, re become responsible is by gaining that correct information and knowledge, applying that correct information and knowledge, operating in that correct information and knowledge over a span of time, which will then become second nature. It'll be a part of who you are. And now you've demonstrated not only can you do it, but you've also demonstrated leadership abilities. There are tools that are needed in order to govern your household, govern a business, govern a church, if you're a pastor over a church, govern anything. You have to have leadership skills and tools in place. That takes work. Work is only accomplished by the made-up minded adult. Even a made-up minded child can accomplish a lot of work, but that takes training. You must be trained up in the way that you should go so that when you are older, you will not depart from that way of work ethic. If you do not work, you do not eat. Second Thessalonians 3.10 tells us clearly that if you do not work, you do not eat. Eat of what? Eat of God's goodness, of his abundance. So that is another reason why people reject the truth. Another reason why they reject the truth is because it will stop them from doing what they're used to doing, which is sin. Sin is, becomes very addictive. It is so much so addictive that it becomes very, very almost impossible to stop, especially when it's got a hooks in you. When it has its hooks in you, it is almost nearly impossible to stop gambling, to stop fornication, watching that porno on TV, to stop uh, going to the lottery, playing that lottery, half of your check going towards the lottery, to stop drinking, to stop smoking. It is nearly impossible to give up all kinds of things that are very offensive to God, the creator of us all. He doesn't want us killing ourselves that way. And anything that is done out of moderation is sin. It is offensive to not only God, the father, but also to yourself and your family and your community. Why? Because it's going to become detrimental to your health. At some point, too much of anything is not good for you. So we have to have a balance of whatever it is that we do. That takes self-control. You have to have self-control in order to balance out and moderate whatever it is that you call yourself doing or desire having a desire to do. Now, yeah, no one's telling you to stop smoking. No one's telling you to stop quit or drinking. No one's telling you to stop gambling. What we're telling you or advising you or enlightening you to is that everything that's done needs to be have, done in a moderation, a form of moderation, which will keep you from uh, 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 going into a state of self-destruction. The devil's tricks and trade is to leer you or steer you into uh, greed or compulsive behavior. That is his trick so that he can get you out of the moderation and into the um, abuse. You go from moderation to abusing whatever it is that you're doing. And that is when it becomes a sin. We do not want you to go to hell, which is where it's not, we're not, we're not called to go. We don't want you to go to jail. We don't want you to wind up without your family, your loved ones, your your bridges that you're constantly burning when you are uh, decide to leave whatever it is that you're doing uh, uh, from the moderation stage into the abusive stage. And so that is why a lot of people reject the truth because they do not 
want to moderate whatever it is that they're doing. They like abusing whatever it is that they're abusing. And if the truth says you have to moderate, they're going to reject it. Another reason why people want to reject the truth is because it's calling you into a service, into a reasonable service. That means you have to share the good news about the creator. That means everything that rolls off your tongue is to be thanksgiving and blessing. Blessing the people that are around you and giving thanks to the creator that created those people and the and the, the ones that helped you get to where you are today that are around you. That is called your support circle. You should be giving thanks for everything in all things. And that is a command in the word of God. That is not Brother Herman's command. If you are the one who likes to complain all the time, that means that you don't have the word of God in you. If you are the one who likes to cry and always find fault at somebody else or something else, that means that you have not yet taken responsibility for your own actions. No one owes you anything, not even God. So now, if anything, he, you owe God. And that means sometimes we have to go into a reasonable service in order to even attempt to give back to God, which there is no such thing. But if you do have a desire to give back to God, if there is such a way, it would be your reasonable service. And the only thing that they're talking about in Romans 12, 1 through 2, is that you're putting on the mind of Christ. You're developing the character so that you can give thanks in all things and stop complaining and crying about this, that, and the other. So people reject the truth because they like to cry and complain. People reject the truth because it's harder in their minds, to find something to be thankful for. It's easier to find something to cry about. That is a child. A mature adult doesn't look for something to cry about. A mature adult doesn't look for something to complain about. A mature adult always is looking at the silver lining in the cloud. This is how we clean up the lenses and change the way we view and perceive all that is around us. So people reject the truth because the truth commands them to become responsible adults. They have to stop being ir irresponsible children. When I was a child, I thought like one, I spoke like one, I behaved like one, and I liked it. But when I became a man, when I got tired of being that child, when I got tired of all that comes with a childlike behavior, I got sick and tired and I wanted to become an adult. So I cried out and then the Holy Trinity answered my cry. They delivered that substance that will help me finish maturing into a, an adult, which allows me to be not only responsible, but held accountable for all that I perceive, think, say, and do. Now I'm not just perceiving, thinking, saying, and doing for myself, my selfish ways. I'm perceiving, thinking, speaking, and doing for the creator, for his business for his way, which will give back to all of our community, which will give back to the individuals inside of these diverse nations, which will give back the values that we are losing, that we are seeing at an alarming rate, which will stop some of our brothers and sisters from going inside of these judicial systems on a wrongful note, on a false arrest, wrongful conviction, unconstitutional conviction which will give back to those who are being medically malpracticed, me medically deceived, medically uh, 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 manipulated. It'll give back. So now I'm not just trying to take, take, take. Now I'm trying to give back the best way I can, which is the way I received, which was freely. If you want to help, then you will make a decision today and grow up, finish growing up. And the only way to do that is to cry out, to our Father God, to the Lord Jesus, to the Holy Trinity, to the Holy Spirit, and ask. Because if you do not ask, you shall not receive. But when you ask it, ask it in Jesus' name. And he'll be faithful and loyal. He is not a man that he should lie. He will keep his word and he will answer you. He will send you one of his servants like me. He will send you one of his servants like your great-grandmother that keeps praying for you. He'll send you one of his servants like your pastor. He'll send you one of his servants that could even be your next door neighbor. 
And it could even be your teenage child. Because there are a lot of teenage children now that are actually going towards God instead of and away from the world. And this is a pleasing sight. So if you want to assist us, go to the we website page, makeemseethetruth.org. On the first page, click the to assist button. And we're grateful for all that you are able and moved to do. We're going to use it to restore values. We're going to use it to build motions, writs, and petitions. We're going to use it to open up lines, phone lines for medical counseling. We're going to use it for all of these things. But we can only do so much from the help of the people. So we know the God that we serve. The God that we serve is powerful enough to move anyone. And that's what we're being patient for. We are going to be still and know that the Lord is God. And we're going to wait for him. But while we wait, we're going to work because wait and serve are synonymous. And they mean to serve the Lord doing your reasonable service while you wait on the blessing. You don't just sit idle and wait. You serve him while you wait. Make up your mind. Stop crying, complaining, and groaning. Find a reason to be thankful. There is blessings in your life that you're overlooking. Stop rejecting the truth. The truth is going to set you free spiritually. It's going to allow you to stay free physically when you operate in it. But you can't operate in something that you keep rejecting. This has been part D. Why do we keep on rejecting the truth? That which will set us free. Thank you for tuning in. This is Brother Herman of MakeUpSeeTheTruth.org. Have yourselves a beautiful night and may God bless us all.